Everyone today, Jesus knows his time has come. Jesus replied, the time has come for the true human one to be glorified. I assure you that unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it can only be a single seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their lives will lose them, and those who hate their lives in this world will keep them forever. Whoever serves me must follow me. Wherever I am, there my servant will also be. My father will honor whoever serves me. Now, my soul is deeply troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this time? No, it's for this reason that I've come to this time. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard and said, It's thunders. And others said, I know an angel spoke to him. Jesus replied, This voice wasn't for your benefit, for my benefit, but for yours. Now is the time for judgment of this world. The ruler of this world will be thrown out. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. He said this to show how he was going to die. So how do you feel when you finally reach a moment that you've been anticipating or waiting for for a long time? Now, it probably depends on whether that is a good event or a bad event, something you're looking forward to or something you're dreading. But either way, the more buildup there is, the more feelings there tend to be. And Jesus knows that his time or his hour has been coming from the beginning. He's been talking about it the whole time. And why is now the time? Well, I guess because he's provided all the signs that he needs to. And it seems like the world is watching, you know, the event right before this that kind of prompts this response is that Gentiles have come to see the Jewish Messiah. That, that seems pretty significant. And, you know, Christ in John's gospel often seems more godlike than in the other three gospels. And yet, even here, he is not beyond human reactions and emotions. For him, as for us, it's always a little complicated. He says that his, his soul or his whole being is troubled. You ever, you ever felt that, like, deep in your gut, deep in your soul? But at the same time, he doesn't ask to escape this. Because as hard as it will be, he knows deep down that what's coming will reveal the beauty, the glory of God. And he uses this analogy of a seed that, that I love. That you have to break out of your selfish, false self. And it's the only way to truly bless others, even if it feels like dying. He let go of, the, of life in the terms defined by the broken world. And so there's this you know, clever double meaning of being lifted up, right? That he's literally going to be lifted up onto a cross, but also that he's lifted up in glory and exaltation. And so the cross is both ugly and beautiful. It shows the worst of humanity at times, our violence, our misuse of power, the way we scapegoat. But it also shows the love of God, the compassion, the nonviolence, the solidarity with those who suffer. So who isn't drawn to that kind of expression of, of true love? And what kind of fruit can that bear?